Hi, it's Steffi from Steffi's Beads and Bobbles, and I'm going to make something with some jewelry, but I kind of wanted to show you what I do. As I take apart the jewelry, I try to make areas that kind of are cohesive. Like anything that's turquoise or southwestern related, I put in here. This is just some recent jewelry I bought. Any findings, especially new packages I put here. And all my chains and necklaces that I can reuse for different projects I put on this tray. And I've got all kinds of chain on here. I have all different sizes and shapes. This is some my friend Deanna sent me. But most of these are from projects. Like here's a necklace. It has a piece I might use. Sometimes I'll take a necklace and add charms or beads. These are bracelet blanks I bought. But I get it all laid out. And in here is miscellaneous pendants pieces I can use that I, some of the pieces that I did take off of the chains and sometimes stuff I bought like this. Some of these are things like this earring which I have one laid out for my projects I'm going to do. Here's another piece of chain that I'll probably stick over here and take the earring off later. But uh, any big pendants I have, anything like that. And then here's some jewelry I haven't taken apart yet. Just uh, some more new beads. Many are things I still have to take apart and uh, sort the beads. This is some kids' beads, actually. These are some wooden beads. Here's a necklace I have not taken apart yet. Here's some beads from some stuff that I did take apart. Here's a little bracelet that is still intact. And then up here, I sort everything into my buckets and here I have all my beads in different colors. Start up here and I've got clear, black, gray and then AB. Down here I have my blues, if I can pull back a little bit, and some purple. Down here I have red, yellow and orange. I have, these are all different pearls. This is one of my boxes of paper beads. I don't know where my other box is. I'm kind of curious as to where it went because it was up here. These are all neutrals and down here are miscellaneous. Some green, some pink, and then these are all miscellaneous. Different beads. And over here are all my findings on these two shelves. And up here is different colors of stone beads. And up here I keep my ribbons and different miscellaneous crafting supplies. So as I go through this jewelry, that is what I do. Anything that's unusual or different, I'll put aside um, to maybe put in a special location. I do have a couple boxes for special beads that are one of a kind that are really unique and pretty. Now, as I take these, some of these pieces, like this is going to be a bracelet, and I'll leave it intact and just add charms to it. It's a beautiful chain, very reflective and pretty, and already has a clasp on it. So that comes, I've got a lot of those in here. Here's a necklace with a fox head that I will simply take apart. Probably add some beads to make this more interesting. And I'll make a little pretty necklace out of it. i got lots of these bracelets. Some of them have a charm on them. This one has a heart. And then after I get it all sorted out, I keep out a box of toggle clasps in case the jewelry I'm working with doesn't have. This is toggle clasps and lobster claws in this box, which is what I've been organizing this last week. And then in here are my head and loop pins, and then these are all my jump rings. So I always have those three boxes out, and then I have some jewelry I recently purchased, and a couple pieces that I already had. I paid a dollar for this gorgeous necklace. They're all glass beads, and I bought it for this gorgeous teal. I don't. I hope the camera's picking it up. And then I got this necklace that has wooden beads and fiber optic beads, including a pair of earrings. And then this necklace, which has a really pretty pendant with rhinestones, filigree, and lots of interesting beads and chain on that one. This one I bought for those and the stone beads. And I got this one the other day for a dollar as well. It has a bunch of cows and chain and it's just kind of fun. Mostly cows, which I'm going to put that over here in my Southwestern box, which is full of all kinds of fun stuff. Then I got the other earring out that has these. Um, 
And I found these clasps I'm going to sort into the clasps. And the next thing I'm going to do is pull, and then this, these pieces here were jewelry I had that I featured on other videos. When I had my um, haul videos up online, these were things that were in my Goodwill boxes. And um, here's a, well this purse, I'm going to make something out of that. Um, this beautiful, I just put a bead in there for fun, but I'm going to do something different with it. This is like a, probably for a uh, diffuser but I'm probably going to do something else with it. I put a large piece of rose quartz in it. This necklace, if it was signed, might be worth a couple bucks, but mine is missing the signature tag. So the charms on it are all absolutely stunning. High quality. This tassel is gorgeous. Um, all the pieces in the chain, it's just high, high quality. But even with the tag, it'd only be worth about $20. And since I don't have the signature tag on it, I'm going to go ahead and take this apart. This is another one that's just not worth anything, even though the quality is stunning on it. You've got this beautiful medallion, and this one here, all rhinestone, no stones missing, and this gorgeous Rolo chain, which is my favorite chain. This little pendant here, I think this is a three-strand necklace, but there's no signature. When you Let's see if on the other side. I can't see where the other side is, but there's just no, there's no signature tag on it, even though it's of highest quality. And that's the thing that continues to fascinate me, is some of these pieces of jewelry and some watches are heavy duty, beautiful quality, and have no signature. This was from a piece I took apart many years ago, and it's a gorgeous tassel. In case you hadn't noticed, I love tassels. In fact, I've kept a, quite a few tassel necklaces for myself. This was a watch in one of our watch boxes. Uh, we get a lot of watch necklaces. And uh, so I kept that out. It does not have a signature on it. And even the back of the watch is just very generic. But I could do something fun with it. Um, anyway, so I'm going to come back once I have some things laid out. And what I'm going to do is take apart some of this jewelry. Maybe I'll show you a little bit of that, but that gets quite tedious. But perhaps I'll come back and show you a little bit of it. But basically, I'm going to take apart um, these beads. I might leave them with the loops for now, because it, that way I can do what I want with them. And if I want the bead by itself, then I can, oops, sorry, I can take it off at that point. But I'm going to come back once I have some of this stuff taken apart, and then we'll design something together on camera. So I will be back in just a few minutes for you, a second for you but it'll probably be a couple hours for me bye I decided to take the entire necklace apart because I wanted to show you what you could get out of one piece of jewelry and I got out of this these are all glass beads and they're a teal green or definitely a greenish tone but they're a teal a dark rich teal and I left one to show you that that's what that is, except this one was not completely, it was missing maybe a, a quarter of it. So there'd be even more of those little beads there. But I got all these bead caps. One head pin that was on this bead here, that's long enough to, to reuse with a small bead. Tons of high quality jump rings. All these bead caps. Two large pieces of chain that could be used for bracelets or whatever you want. A clasp. Now this is very worn. This is the one piece of the necklace that is worn off, but you could use it in a steampunk piece, I would imagine. Then these are like an AB finish, and these on one side are silver, and on one side they're very pretty AB silvery. But let me pull back so you can see all of that for a buck. This necklace harvested so many, or I was able to harvest so many things off of this necklace, including all these gorgeous focal beads for a dollar. I would say this necklace would have been worth paying as much as eight to twelve dollars for to get everything I got. So you won't always find this kind of stuff for a dollar, but I'd say at most antique stores or flea markets, you'll get a necklace like this for up to five to eight bucks usually as maybe as much as 12 but I'd say five to eight bucks and when you're looking at everything you get off of this one necklace 
I mean, these are beautiful bead caps. A ton of them. There's only two of these. It was on the one focal piece. And then the rest are all... I've got four of these. There's only two of these as well. So two had two. That one had two. That one had two. The re there was a ton of these. And then two sets of those. So when you look at everything I got for a dollar or less, because I think we paid $25 with tax for, I think I counted 25 items we bought at that thrift store. They're a really nice little family-owned thrift store. They're, they give 10% to charity because that's how the original owner set it up and when they took it over, they're completely overwhelmed with the amount of stuff they have to deal with. Uh, the husband was showing me 10 foot high piles of stuff and he's divided it, bagged it and divided it into all the different holidays. But they do have excellent prices and if you buy a lot they give you a really good deal. So I was very thrilled with this and just this piece alone I could make stuff out of but I'm going to combine this with a couple other pieces I'm going to take apart. But I just wanted to showcase what exactly I got from this one necklace. So when you're shopping for jewelry, especially if you're a new jewelry designer and you're, you're just starting to build your collection of beads, antique stores, yard sales, thrift stores, estate sales. Typically this beaded jewelry is not that valuable and would sell between five and eight bucks. If there's this quantity of items, it's worth it to get you started because just these teal beads, those are hard to find. I wish the, the, I'm hoping the camera's really catching the color. It's quite striking. And then to also get these neutral kind of grayish silvery toned and these AB beads. I mean, look at all of that for under a dollar, a dollar or less. And at yard sales, people routinely sell these for one to three dollars. So if you're willing to, to go treasure hunting, you can absolutely get a lot of stuff for your money and build your collection with unique and one-of-a-kind beads because some of these are hard to find out new. I mean, these are, do they have a little bit of, well, this one looks like it has tape on it, actually. Oh, no, it doesn't. It's just the reflection. Um, but they might have little scuffs and stuff, but that's okay. If you're making a repurposed piece, you just let them know. But that would not stop me from buying a piece of jewelry if something was... Because once you wear this a few times, you're going to have a few little scuffs. But most of the beads are really, really perfect. It's just these more flatter ones. You can see some of the wear. But even when you buy brand new beads on a string, they're whacking against the ones around them. And they can even have little scratches just from being moved from the factory to the store, being hung up, people going through them. Sorry, I hit the, phone, the camera again. But I just want to show you this, and I will be back in a minute with all the jewelry that I just bought the other day broken down onto this tray. Okay, here's everything when I was done. And I made one mistake. There would have been another clasp, but I got too close and nipped a hole in that, so it was unusable. So that was my fault. I'm probably a little bit tired, and I didn't make a good uh, decision. I should have bent the wire and taken it off that way. But what I'm left with is I've got three little pendants here. Oh, they're fairly deep. This one's pretty good size, and then the other two are a little bit smaller. I've got the fiber optic beads in pink, green, and yellow. I've got all kinds of bits and pieces of chain. I have all of these greenish teal. They could be a dark green, I guess. Might not be so much teal as a really dark green. That's a pretty the camera looks pretty accurate, so maybe it's like a deep, rich green. But it's beautiful. And then I've got these stone beads and these little uh, rhinestone pave type beads. And these are all acrylic, but I don't have a problem working with acrylic. And I got everything on this tray for $3. And keep in mind, this is a tiny family-owned thrift store. Well, it's actually a huge building, but the store itself is small. And they don't have much jewelry out. I would say there was maybe 10 more pieces of jewelry that I could have bought for the chain and I may go back and buy those just for the chain with maybe a pendant similar to this on it. One had a really pretty uh, pendant that I wish I had bought. Um, I always say you don't regret what you do buy, you regret what you didn't buy. But anyway, it looks pretty good. This is everything I have to work with. Now I'm going to get out some 
head pins and see what I can create just using what's on the tray. I have jump rings here, but I just don't have an I can't I could have left these on the hoops, but I really are on the pins, but I really wanted everything fresh and clean. The only thing I left on were these drops for obvious reasons because I have to. Oh that one, yeah, they have the bales on them. Everything else I took off if it was just a looped head pin. So let me come up with some ideas. I might do some earrings. I might go ahead and make a, a bracelet. Let me kind of stew around with this for a little bit, get some head pins out, and see what I can come up with to show you. Okay, I'm all set up here. Um, hopefully the light will be okay. I, I just, this room has just always been a problem with light. But what I've done, and this is the easiest way to use beads is to make earrings but I wanted to do a necklace as well so I've got a little pendant here I'm going to make and then attach the chain to each side and then we'll, we'll just loop one pair of earrings because pretty much everyone knows how to do that but I'll show you the earrings I had two of these large heavy glass beads and these are glass they're beautiful and then I took these iridescent grayish AB finish and then these bead caps were in between on one of the necklaces. It might have been the um, necklace that had the uh, these beautiful beads in it which I didn't end up even using any of those yet um, but it, basically what you're going to do is you're going to take your rolling tool and you're just going to roll it back leaving enough to um, cut off and make your loop and then you'll finish rolling it and make it I like to tuck I really like to tuck the um, when you get too many components it kind of can get loose in your hands so you gotta try to push down from the bottom but you I don't usually use this tool. I usually use this tool right here, which I find a little easier, but this is a really hard tool to find. So I don't like to use it because I like to use a tool you guys can buy. But however well you do it, you want to tuck it into the top of the bead cap if at all possible to hold it down. And you can take your pliers and tuck them in there and get the same effect if you once you've looped it. You can do that too. But get it nice, get it straightened up. And then you're going to take, and the ear wires are a personal preference. There's these type, which I think are really pretty. They do have the coil, but they're kind of hammered. And then these are the more traditional fish, they're called fish hook type, where they have the ball and the spring. And you can do it one of two ways. And you have to be careful because until you know how your ear wires are, sometimes you can open them and they'll break. So you want to open them as little as possible. So... I'm only going to show you making one earring because it's a waste of your time showing all the earrings. But I'll come back later and show, at the end of the video I'll, I'll come back and show you all the finished earrings. This is another one I did. And then I like this one. This was using um, the beads from the charm necklace and they're plastic. This is like an acrylic but with a foil inside. Really pretty. I like that a lot. I don't care if something's lightweight plastic if it looks nice. And these really have the look of glass. And believe it or not, these are the wooden beads. And in a previous video, I showed you how you could take just Sharpie pens and color wooden beads. And that's exactly what I did. And I also did a silver and a kind of goldish bronze. But I really liked the purple. So I added one of the small little beads that kind of has a purplish look to it with the wooden bead and that sharpie gives it a really pretty metallic look and so that was the other one I made and then for the necklace I'm going to take two of these side charms and put them loop them now these you want to make a little bit smaller loop to as closely match what you have on the other side as you can so I'm going to cut that one a little bit shorter. Get this light in a little bit better place maybe. Put it right over me so that you can see. And then I'm going to roll that. 
like I said, if you're used to using the double rolling uh, tool, you probably will be doing very well with that. I've never used it really, because I, I had a vintage one of these. It was one of the first tools I had when I started making jewelry. My husband actually found it at a yard sale. It's very tiny. It's very cool. Um, and then, I, then once you get it there, see how it's a little off? You just take your pliers and you kind of pull it together. And you just get it to match. And then if you want them to be the same direction, you simply take two of... I've got tons of these pliers because I like to have more than one tip. Like these are pretty similar, but I also have one that's more... Well, no, I thought I had a needle nose. Oh my, I might have given that one to my grandson by accident. Um, but I try to keep a couple different uh, sizes so that no matter what I'm doing, I have one. So I probably gave my grandson my needle nose by accident. He needed a tool. He likes to make jewelry with his girlfriend. And I think I gave him the wrong one. So that's okay. It's pretty... I've had it for a while. It's just one of these tools that you buy at Hobby Lobby or um, Michael's. These are actually from Joann's and very good quality. They're just now starting to not be able to cut the hardest. Um, you can see they're getting nicked up. I have to buy another good pair. Uh, the pair I gave my grandson, they were getting pretty old, and I paid quite a bit of money for them. Um, I was at a bead show, which we used to have here in Texas until, well, you know what happened in 2020. And everything shut down, and I'm not sure the woman ever recovered and got the show back up. Um, but she would come to town with vendors selling beads, and it was wonderful. And we, um, I, I went with my best friend, and I went with David a few times. And one guy was telling me when I was looking at his tools, I said, "Why are your um, wire cutters so expensive? Because they were like sixty, seventy dollars." He goes, "Well, most people have." cutters that aren't as strong as the wire that they're cutting and I mentioned I wasn't with my husband at that show and I mentioned it to him so we got online so I wasn't going to buy anything without talking to him because he knows tools better than I do now that wire is not perfect you can see here I don't know if you can see this but for the sake of the video I'm just going to use it but I'll replace it later it um it's I don't know what's going on. See how shiny it is on this end. But on this end, it's very dull and soft. So I don't know if that was just a damaged one. I really don't know. Now, I don't put jump rings. I just open them back up. And you might wonder, why do you bother closing them if you're going to open them back up? Well, because it's easier to close them back if they're already where you want them. It's very hard to make the initial loop if you've got a wire in the middle. And I learned that from just 20 years, 20, well, actually 30 years now. I started making jewelry when our youngest son was a baby, and he is 33. So I've been doing this a very long time. So you're going to open whichever side you can get open. Yeah, that, that wire I'm going to have to replace. But we will not do that for this video. We'll just go ahead and use it, but I will replace it. It'll just take me a minute. Okay, and then... You just get them as straight and nice as you can. And then you lay out your charm, your pendant. And I wish the lighting was a little better. I just don't know what to do to get that light brighter. I've tried ring lights. I've tried everything. Now, I will put a jump ring here. Now, there's two ways we can do this. We can use the jump rings that came with the necklace, which might be a bit of an overkill. But for this video, I will go ahead and use them. Because I'm trying to show you how to use what you've got. Now, head pins are almost impossible to reuse. Now, I usually do this, but I do have this tool, and I'm going to try to use it. I've never really used it before. I bought it. I thought, oh, that's really neat. And then I just went, kept using my pliers. I don't know how to close it with that. So I'm, I'm just going to use the pliers. I, I get Sometimes you get new tools, and... They help, and sometimes you're like, yeah. For me, it's easier doing it the old way. Okay. I close that up, and then that will get hooked onto here. So what I'm going to do is do this other side, and then 
um, I'll put the jump rings on the other end and come back so that you don't have to sit there and watch me do all that. Um, I'll get everything else put together and then show you how I'm finishing up the um, necklace. I just don't want to make this video too long because most of this is not the stuff you're tuning in for. Um, most of you know how to do this simple stuff. So I'm going to connect all this, put the jump rings on the other end, and then we'll do the clasp and all of that. So I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back and I got everything ready to show you. And one thing I forgot to mention when I was doing this, because when you're doing it on your own and you're not trying to show somebody, you automatically do it. But when you go to put this jump ring on, you can attach everything at one time. So that's, you know, when it's open, um, you can go ahead and put everything on that loop. I've got the everything ready to go, so I'm going to go ahead and hook together the clasp, which is the lobster claw that I think was on this exact necklace. That's the fun part of using the chain and the clasp, is the fact that you are using what goes together. And then here's the, I put the thicker jump ring on this side, because if you need a shorter necklace, that's the side you're going to clasp on. So you kind of want a nice, heavier... That's not going to be a very big necklace, but this is more just to give you an idea of what you can do. So there's the necklace finished. And just gives you kind of an idea of what you can do. And then, um, let me. I'll be right back and I'll show you all the earrings finished. Now, the one mistake I made that I wish I had not done is when I took all these apart, they were chained. They were, you know, I could have chained them back together. And I normally leave them chained for a little bit, but I wanted to show you all my materials and I just cut them all. If I had left them chained, I could have easily made a chained bracelet out of them. So in the future, I'll make sure I do that. And I do have quite a few beads in my boxes that I have left the the two loops on. So think about that before. If it's a looped necklace, leave the loops on to you're absolutely sure because it's just as easy to cut them off if you don't need them on. And to be honest with you, that was the biggest mistake I made. Had I left them on, I could have easily chained and made a beautiful chained green glass bracelet. And so that's another item I could have made. And then I never did use any of these cute little beads here. And these also could be uh, used in many different ways. They could be stacked as earrings, chained together for a delicate bracelet. Um, but I did use the bead caps off of those, which were these little ones, I believe. And I did use the um, wooden beads. I'm not positive those were part of it. I can't really remember. But this this uh, tutorial was mostly about how you can take a piece of jewelry and make different pieces out of it. I think I did pretty good. Um, I made a few pairs of earrings here and I'm very happy with how they came out. And I really like these. Even though they're not glass on the bottom, the tops are glass. Um, these are think th these and the wood beads are the only two I used that weren't glass, but they look like glass and they're not as heavy on your ear. And then the little wooden ones, which you could have you could have uh, stained these any color with the marker. I'm very happy with those. And then the set, which I was lucky, there were three pieces that were the same shape, and I used the chain and the extension. And if you ever get a piece and you don't have enough chain, that's where having several pieces or many pieces gives you the opportunity to add other elements to it. Like if you have 20 pieces of jewelry, that gives you more chain to choose from, more findings, more beads. The only things you really can't reuse, unless it's for yourself or your ear wires, if the earrings look really clean and you don't mind, you can clean them with alcohol and you can wear them. But if you're going to sell them, you need to put new ear wires on. And head pins. I think I was managed, I managed to rescue one or two, um, but there's, I don't even know if that's one, I don't even think I did. By the time you cut them, they're bent at the end and they're 
really hard to use even if they have a big bead on them. So the two things you cannot reuse are your head pins which you've got the looped and the straight head pins. So those are things that you need to have on hand. Uh, well, that's a really odd looking. That looks beat up. Look at that. Okay. I get mine from Hobby Lobby. Um, those are opened already. I don't know if they came that way or if I did that. But head pins and loop pins are two things you can get pretty cheap at Hobby Lobby. They have their sales. Do I have an unopened package here? I think I might. I don't. No, I don't. Do I? Yes, I do. Whenever I go, whether I'm going for jewelry or not, if this stuff is on sale, it's $3.99. If it's on 50% off, I will pick up something. And head pins, for $2, you get $100. They have the loop pins. They have the shorter ones. And I also picked up, what was the other thing? I think I have that up here. Oh, I don't know. Maybe not. Well, I get my... Um, jump rings as well. And don't use your nails to open things because that's what happens. Um, jump rings, are that's a great way to get your jump rings also for $2 a bag. So every time I go, and then they had these which are connectors. So like if you want to hang this down and have a bead hanging lower, you can use these. There's three different lengths. The connector bar. Um, but that is absolutely the best way to get all your findings is when they're on Half price, I've got some brass ones too. I get copper brass and I get the, uh, and then these are crimp beads or crimping tools. So whenever I, I go, I look and see if there's um, something I can use. Sometimes they're picked over, sometimes they're not. But anyway, this was more of a what you can do with jewelry. And I still have most of my tray here. Look at this. I still have most of the tray. Look at this. I still have all of these beads. I didn't even touch any of these. So, I mean, I could have made many more pieces of jewelry, but I didn't want to make this video too long. But you can use so many of these things together. I mean, you've got all these beautiful fiber optic beads, these beautiful glass beads, or uh, stone beads, the uh, pave beads. There's these silver ones here. I've got drops. I mean, there, there's so many wonderful things. This could be the focal of a bracelet with chain on either side. Or, like I said, I could chain this and then chain these on the side. Or the small ones, alternating them with other beads. There's just so much. I just wanted to show you a small fraction. I mean, I've got all these beautiful bead caps. I don't know if you can see those. So the bead caps. And then I still have this, and I did not take those off yet. I wanted to show you what it looked like, but I'll have more of those little tiny beads. And um, I do want to do more, some of that wire wrapping to show you how to do that on a video. And I still have all the beautiful pendants. I could probably do three or four videos just on what I got from these few pieces of jewelry. But what I'll do is put these aside, and I've got other pieces. Like here's another great one. These are always available. You can find this type of jewelry all the time for a buck or two. And look at all the stuff you can harvest off of that. You've got little rhinestone. Now that one's got a missing one, but those are real easy to replace. you got, these are plastic, but again, they look nice. And you've got a nice chain once you unhooked everything. And there's stuff like this. This was in one of my boxes. If you don't like the pendant, which I happen to really like it, you could take it apart and look at all the beads you could get. Now, I think they probably got rid of it because these beads had the color come off. I don't know if you can see that on... Yeah, you can see it. And what a shame because it's... An, and these are coming off too. So when you want to do this type of a project, you do not want to use beads that are painted. You want to use solid glass beads. So maybe we'll attempt to make something like this too because that would actually be very easy. And I think it would be a fun project. So I think I'm going to put this aside as an example. And then this is another necklace that was in my boxes. And I think I showed you this earlier. You can get these things with beautiful quality charms and tassels to use in stuff. So I've got several good pieces over here and lots of other beautiful jewelry. So I'll be making other tutorials on what you can make with jewelry just to give you ideas. But really the sky's the limit. I'm sure any one of you could look at this tray and you could come up with a, 
I'm sure between everybody, 100, 100 different ideas of what to do with all these amazing pieces. Now the chains are a little limiting, I won't lie. This one was not a good chain chain option. These are big, chunky, which would make great charm bracelets if you had big, like the bigger beads. Like I could randomly put some of those big green beads on here, and that would be pretty. Maybe even alternating them with, um, I could even use some of these white beads on here. So that would be an option. And that's another big chunky chain. I prefer to work with chain more like this Rolo chain here, which is a nice stainless steel chain. Or even this thinner chain like this is more what I use. But there's no end to what you can do. So I just kind of wanted to show you some of the things you could do if you had jewelry. And to show you that this is a really great way whether you're starting out or just want to add to your bead collection, find some pretty pieces of jewelry. Like I said, I got this one for under a dollar, but with all the stuff I got, it would have been worth five to eight bucks, maybe even 10 bucks to get all the things I got. This little one here, I got quite a bit off of. This bracelet was just these beads, but that's still for a dollar. You know, it's just amazing what you can get from old pieces of jewelry. So when you see an ugly piece of jewelry, don't look at its total, look at it in total. Look at the parts. I have found necklaces that were terribly ugly, but almost every part on it was pretty. They just didn't look good together. Or maybe there was one bead that was just awful, but it was combined with some beautiful beads. So when you're looking, if you have a chance to get some jewelry very inexpensively, Look over the elements. Are they glass? These were glass. They were good quality. They were beautiful beads. And the price was right. Now these pave beads are not the best. I mean they do, these are the cheap ones so they, they kind of are sometimes uneven but they're still fun to use. These are stone. These are a stone bead that's really pretty. It's probably a dyed stone but it's still pretty. So there's just no end. And like I said, wooden beads Get them in any size or shape, even if they're not colored. Because, you, I mean, I couldn't find my Sharpies or I would have done other colors. You could do pinks, purples, grays, even black. In reds, you know, for Christmas, you could even color on them, do designs, candy cane stripes, whatever. Wooden beads are a great resource. And once you put Sharpie on them, look at how pretty that is. And you could seal it if you want. I've never done it and I've never had it rub off. But if you were worried, you could seal it. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. I still have so many beautiful elements here to work with, and I may add a few more elements and maybe do another video using this plus other stuff. The more you have to work with, the less limited you are. I was trying to work with just what I had, so in case you were just starting out, for whatever reason you didn't have any beads or you just had beads you weren't happy with, how you could find a couple of nice pieces and just, and antique stores. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've gotten really beautiful jewelry in an antique booth for three, four, five bucks, you know, and look for sales. Like I bought a necklace at an antique store, it was $12, half price, $6. It was a J. Crew, and it was almost this color. It was a little more teal than this. Rhinestones, just set, circle rhinestones, set. I sold it that night for $75. It sold immediately. So there are deals to be found out there, whether it's for you to resell the jewelry or take it apart and use the pieces, because that's what I figured. For $6, if it wasn't worth anything, I would happily use the pieces. But when I got home and researched it, I did a little research in the store. But I didn't care because I loved it and I would have used it. So... Go out and shop. Hit yard sales. They're your best resource because I bought a whole box of jewelry, uh, 32 pieces when we were down in, um, or we were up in Denison, Texas for an art event our daughter was participating in. And I and they gave it to me for $30, so a dollar a piece for 30, well, under a dollar a piece because it was 32 or 33 pieces. And, there was a, and I bought them for parts and pieces because none of them were spectacular, but there were some of this type of thing in there. So, anyway, I've rambled on long enough. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll be back again very soon. I'm going to be continuing to do this type of work. I'm going to be doing some more ornaments, 
and some other crafts and jewelry type things. I'm going to get back to my steampunk. In fact, I have a piece here. I don't know if I ever shared it with you, but I will share that in a future video. I have to remake one of the earrings because I lost somehow lost an earring and I couldn't find the elements. And that's where cleaning your studio comes in handy. I needed one element. It was like a little piece like this, but in black glass. And I found it when I was putting away all my beads. And I've got all the parts, and now I can repair it. So I'll do a video showing you that, and maybe do some other steampunk on that one. But I'll be back soon. Thank you for being patient with me. This has been a rough month, not been able to post, but I'm glad to be back. Bye now.